In this lesson we will look at the formation of clouds. Clouds are formed because water vapor in the air condenses into liquid or solid form, water or ice. In the previous lesson we have looked at the process of condensation and evaporation. Let's summarize the key points from that lesson. The amount of water vapor in the air is indicated by the relative humidity or the dew point. When the temperature is above the dew point, the air is undersaturated and the relative humidity is lower than 100%. The water in the air will be in the gas state and this air is said to be dry. When the temperature is equal to or lower than the dew point, the air is saturated and the relative humidity is 100% or higher. In this case, the condensation rate is higher than the evaporation rate and water droplets will form. The air is said to be moist. So to form water droplets, the air must cool below the dew point. In the previous lesson, we have looked at two mechanisms in which the air can cool. Cooling by radiation and cooling by contact, also called advection cooling. This is how dew and frost are formed. Clouds, however, are mainly formed due to a third mechanism, cooling by uplift. There are three ways in which the air can lift. Due to convection, called convectional uplift. Lift at cold and warm fronts, called frontal uplift. Lift due to raising terrain, called orographic uplift. First I will explain why the air will cool when it is lifted and how clouds are formed as a result. Then we will have a look at each of the three mechanisms of uplift. And finally we will look at what types of clouds can form. So why does the air cool as it lifts? It's not that the air higher up is cooler. It's because the pressure drops when you get higher, as I demonstrated in my other video. So if air is lifted, the pressure will drop and the air will expand as a result. Now it follows from thermodynamics, the physics of heat and temperature, that when a gas expands, it performs work on its surroundings and its temperature drops. I can demonstrate this effect with this spray can with compressed air. I've taken an infrared picture of the spray can. The temperature is about 26 degrees Celsius. Now as air escapes, it expands because the pressure in the can is higher than the pressure outside the can. Again, I took an infrared picture, and you can clearly see the temperature has dropped, particularly at the bottom. Let's try that once more. Note that the temperature scale is different now, but it's clear that the temperature has dropped. Such an expansion is called adiabatic, which means there is no transfer of heat. That's because the air conducts heat very poorly. So expanding air cools. Now if air contains water vapor and the temperature drops below the dew point, this water vapor will condense and water drops will form. However, I'll demonstrate that it takes one extra ingredient. Here I've got a flask with warm water. I'll shake it a bit such that the air contains a lot of water vapor. Then I'll close it off with a stopper in which I've placed a valve of a bicycle tire. I'll pump some air in the flask. Now if I take the stopper off, the air will expand and cool. Let's see what happens. Nothing. No water droplets. No clouds. That's because the water vapor has nothing to condense on. Water molecules are so tiny that the probability that they will meet each other and condense in a water droplet is negligible. Next I'll show you what happens if I light a match in the flask and repeat the experiment. Now you can clearly see a cloud has formed. That's because the air in the flask now contains a lot of soot from the burnt match. Although soot is small, it's large enough for the water to condense on. In the atmosphere, such particles are called condensation nuclei. And this same mechanism is how condensation trails from aircraft form. Now to summarize, this is how clouds form. The air rises and expands, expanding air cools, the temperature drops below the dew point, and condensation takes place at condensation nuclei. As I've mentioned, there are three mechanisms for air to lift and cool. Let's review each of them. The first is convection. On the left, you can see the temperature of the air at different altitudes. The dew point is 19 degrees. When the surface of the Earth heats up during the day, the temperature of the air above it will also increase. As a result, you get a warm parcel of air, indicated by the circle. 
this warm parcel of air will rise, expand, and cool down. At some point, the temperature drops below the dew point. At this altitude, clouds form. The parcel of air will continue to rise as long as its temperature is higher than the air surrounding the parcel. In lesson 7, we will look into this process in more detail. Air may also lift due to fronts. This is called frontal uplift. A front is a boundary between two types of air, warm and cool. I'll go into the details of fronts in next lesson. For now it's enough to know that if warm air meets cool air, the warm air will slide up the cool air because its density is lower. And as before, if the air rises, it expands and cools. And if the temperature reaches the dew point, clouds will form. The final mechanism for air to lift is when it's forced up by the landscape, for example, when it encounters a mountain range. This is called orographic uplift. On the windward side of the mountain, the air can only go up. As it does, it expands and cools. And if it reaches the dew point, clouds will form and precipitation may fall. On the other side of the mountain range, the leeward side, the air will flow back down, pressure increases and the temperature rises. Any water still present will evaporate. So the leeward side will experience a lot less precipitation. If that occurs, this is called a rain shadow. This is why the Atacama Desert in South America is so dry. This desert is amongst the driest places on Earth. The average yearly rainfall is about 15 millimeters. But there are places that receive as little as 1 to 3 millimeters of rain each year. On this satellite image of the Atacama Desert, you can clearly see this effect. On the west, there are clouds, but they disappear as the air flows land inward. Because the Atacama is so dry, it is a perfect place for astronomical observations. That's why the very large telescope of the European Southern Observatories was built here. Now that we know how clouds are formed, let's look at some of the major cloud types. There are four core types of cloud forms. Cirro means hair in Latin. Cirro clouds are wispy, feather-like clouds. They occur at high altitudes where the temperature is below zero. They consist of ice crystals. Cumulo means to swell. Cumulus clouds are white and fluffy. These clouds have a clear boundary and develop vertically. Strato means layer. These clouds are broad and cover the sky like a blanket. Nimbo means rain in Latin. These four core types are combined to classify clouds. There's also a prefix alto, meaning high, and it's a bit confusing because this prefix is used for mid-level clouds. Let's have a look at the 10 basic clouds. Starting at high altitude, there are three main cirrus form clouds. Cirro cumulus, cirro stratus, and plain cirrus. At mid-level, you can find alto cumulus and alto stratus. At the lowest level, there are cumulus, strato cumulus, and plain stratus. There are two cloud types that occur across different levels. First of all, nimbostratus spans low and mid-level. This is the rain cloud that occurs most often. Snow can also fall from this type of cloud. And finally, there's the mother of all clouds, cumulonimbus, the thunderstorm cloud. This cloud spans all three layers of clouds. It develops from cumulus by growing vertically. Heavy rain and hail can fall from these types of clouds. The top of the cloud is flattened because it hits upon the stratosphere. In this lesson we have looked at the formation of clouds. Clouds form because of the condensation of water. And for water to condense, air must cool below the dew point. The necessary cooling occurs due to uplift of air. We've looked at three types of uplift. Due to convection, due to fronts, and due to raising terrain, orographic uplift. And I gave a summary of the ten main types of clouds. You just need to remember the four basic forms, cirrus, cumulo, stratus and nimbo. And together with the term alto, you should be able to determine most types of clouds you see. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked this lesson, and next lesson I will explain a bit more about how these clouds form at fronts and how you can use that to make a rough weather forecast.